This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1467, Managing Your Money on the Road, by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from the best personal finance blogs on the web, with the author's permission, of course. Let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. Managing Your Money on the Road by Don Starks of simplemoneypro.com. I am a geek when it comes to checklists and organizational tools. I like to systematize anything that happens routinely. Recently, I've been working to organize our financial life when we travel. We enjoy long stretches of travel in our RV, and that requires being organized around many things. I have a pretty good system for packing for those long excursions, and I also create many lists in the weeks leading up to the trip. The most worrisome aspect of extended travel is managing finances from the road. Despite the fact I have automated much of our bill paying, I worry about things falling through the cracks. I'd like to share some helpful ideas I've picked up along the way, and I hope you'll share your own tips about managing your finances when you're a frequent traveler. Dealing with the paper. Number one, suspend your mail. Many of our bills come electronically, but there are still some that come via snail mail. I worry about mail piling up in the mailbox, especially mail that might contain sensitive personal data. Once upon a time, you had to physically go to the post office and fill out a mail hold form. Now it's a snap to manage this online. It takes me less than a minute to fill out the details. So far, this process has worked flawlessly for us. Number two, cut down on the mail in the first place. This practice is bigger picture thinking, but well worth it regardless of your travel habits since it reduced waste. Because of our traveling, I was extra motivated to reduce the amount of mail coming to our house in the first place. Although it took a few months and some guerrilla tactics, I went online or called all the companies that were sending us promotional mail and asked them to take us off their list. You can also go to direct mail preferences online to find information about how to get off mailing lists. Number three, find an accordion style file. Accordion files are very handy for traveling. Mine is flexible plastic with a sturdy handle. You can also use a hard sided plastic bin with a lid, but that won't be as easy to squeeze into a smaller space. Fill this file with all the important papers you might need while traveling. I keep all our important documents in my accordion file when I'm not traveling, and because it's small and flexible, I can bring the entire thing along instead of an abbreviated version. Number four, secure financial papers left behind. Whatever you're leaving behind should be properly secured. A well-hidden fire safe is sufficient. If you're already minimal about what you keep in your files, this should be easier. Extra travel in your life is an effective catalyst for streamlining your financial papers. Managing the money. Number one, plan months ahead with cash flow. Try to build a surplus into your cash flow so that you can pay ahead for things that arise during your absence. Enter all the upcoming auto drafts into your checkbook and double check that all income will automatically deposit without your input. Spot potential financial obligation landmines you might have forgotten by looking further ahead in your budget. Number two, mark important dates on your calendar. For bills you're unable to set to draft automatically, mark your calendar so you don't pay them late or forget to pay them at all. It's good to also create reminders to check on your bank account. It's wise to confirm deposits were made when expected and bills were paid on time. Problems are far easier to fix when caught early. Number three, have an emergency cushion. This is a good practice even if you don't travel for long time periods. It can be frustrating and complicated to handle financial issues if they arise while you're away from home. Ensure you have a cushion of funds and a money market that can serve as an overdraft protection for your checking account. Taking care of your credit. Number one, take only one or two credit cards. Keep any other cards at home in a safe place. The caveat here is to do some homework. For example, while we love our Discover card, we were disappointed last summer during a trip to Ontario to realize almost no merchant accepted it. Fortunately, we had also brought our Visa card. 
The danger of misplacing or having cards stolen is increased when you're on the move or in new places. So try to avoid bringing a wallet full of cards. Number two, leave your debit cards at home. If you use a debit card to prudently manage your money, kudos to you, but debit cards can be more dangerous to lose than credit cards. So be thoughtful about the risks you want to manage while on your trip. If possible, take a credit card and leave the debit card safely at home. Number three, alert the credit card companies of your travels. Give your credit card company a heads up if you're traveling, especially if it doesn't fit your normal pattern. Credit companies will sometimes refuse charges if they suspect your card is being used fraudulently. I alerted Discover that we would be traveling to Ontario last summer, and they were delightfully helpful. The agent described how the exchange rate would work on the card and helpfully noted our travel on our account so no one would suspect fraud when we made our charges out of the country. As I mentioned above, almost no one accepted Discover, so I found the situation hilariously funny. Despite this, we do really love working with Discover. Streamlining your financial life can help you in so many ways, especially when you leave home for stretches of time. Take time to get organized around your finances before you leave home. The more streamlined and automated you can be, the better. You just listened to the post titled Managing Your Money on the Road by Dawn Starks of simplemoneypro.com. We're all looking for ways to save money, right? Especially now. So let me ask you this. How'd you like to keep an extra $961 a year in your pocket? That's how much Gabby customers save per year on average on car and home insurance. I just went through this process myself. It took a total of seven minutes and I saved $200 on my auto and home insurance. The site is super smooth and easy to navigate. The questions start right away and are easy to answer. I also liked that I could enter in my login information for my current insurance provider so that Gabby could review my current coverage and make sure I'm getting the same coverage at a lower price. I was quoted eight options that are cheaper than what I'm paying now with the best deal right at the top. My only complaint, not knowing about this sooner. If they can't find you savings like they did for me, they'll let you know so that you can relax knowing you have the best rate out there and they'll never sell your info. So no annoying spam or robocalls you're probably overpaying on car and home insurance. See how much Gabby can save you. It's totally free to check out and there's no obligation. Go to gabby.com slash OFD. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash OFD. Gabby.com slash OFD. Great advice here from Dawn on streamlining your finances. I actually went through this process a few years ago when I walked the Camino de Santiago and I went away to Spain for two months. Prior to that trip, I never automated my bill payments because I actually enjoyed doing it manually twice per month when I got paid. It forced me to balance my checking account and monitor for fraudulent charges. However, I really didn't want to worry about this while on the road. So I turned on automatic payments for most of my bills. And for the ones I couldn't automate, like my rent, I paid in advance so I didn't have to think about it. When I got back, I just kept everything automated and I've enjoyed the convenience ever since. Now I just look at my accounts once per month to monitor for fraud, make sure all my expenses are logged and categorized, and calculate my savings rate for fun. As someone who hates paper, I'm a big fan of my accordion-style file, which holds basically all my important paperwork. I couldn't take this with me when I went to Spain, so I had a friend hold on to it for me, and I had digital copies of everything important that I could access while on the road if I needed. Being away for two months prompted me to get super organized with all this stuff, but I've benefited from that for many years since. Perhaps it's worth pretending you're going away, even if you're not, just to get yourself super organized. And that should do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'll be back tomorrow as usual, so I'll see you there on the Wednesday show where your optimal life awaits.